So my name is Tom Clendon and I am the ACCA SBR online lecturer and podcaster. And this edition is all about ISA 21 foreign currency, but it's taking a particular emphasis on group accounts, on translation into the presentational currency, on the idea that we're a parent company and we have overseas subsidiaries. And this is something which wasn't tested at the skills level, wasn't tested at FR, but is specifically examinable at SBR. So it's quite realistic, you know, um, if you've got a subsidiary um, that is based in, I don't know, Malaysia, then they will be preparing their financial statements using Ringgit. And if you've got a subsidiary based in France, they'll be preparing their financial statements using euros. And what you can't do in preparing the group accounts is to aggregate a euro with a Ringgit, whatever. So in the exam, the presentational currency will be the dollar. In the exam, we're interested in making sure that the group accounts are prepared in dollars. So how do we do this? Well, fundamentally, there are four rules. Fundamentally, there are four separate things that you need to know. What you will never be asked to do is to prepare a full set of group accounts with the consolidation of an overseas subsidiary. What you might be asked to do is some calculations of a particular number for example, the exchange difference, or a particular number like, for example, I don't know, the revenue or the or the uh, property plant and equipment of the group. If you're asked to do the number, you will always be then asked to explain it, discuss it. So understanding what's going on is important. So four steps. Rule number one, step number one, assets and liabilities. If you've got an overseas subsidiary and they have got a statement of financial position, they will have their assets and liabilities in a foreign currency. And you will need to translate the assets and liabilities at the closing rate. All assets, all liabilities of an overseas subsidiary are translated at the closing rate. The statement of financial position, the balance sheet, is as at a moment in time. Closing rate. Number two, profit and loss account, income and expenses. Now, these have accrued over the year. Now, in some kind of ideal world, each transaction, each uh, sale, each purchase, each is translated at a spot rate. That's impractical. And therefore, we are allowed to translate all of the income and all of the expenses in the profit and loss account at the average rate. Assets and liabilities go through at closing, but in the P&L, the income and the expenses go through at the average rate. Point number three, goodwill. In the group accounts, you will get goodwill arising. And the trick with the calculation of goodwill is to calculate goodwill in the local currency. So you get the investment in the sub in the local currency, the NCI in the local currency, the fair value, the net assets in the local currency, in the foreign currency, and you calculate goodwill. Now, goodwill is located overseas. The reputation of the business is overseas. It's not really an in head office as a consolidation adjustment. We think of it as existing in the local market. And that's the justification for translating goodwill at the closing rate. Recap, assets and liabilities closing, income and expenses average, goodwill closing. Now, because we're retranslating things at the closing rate, there will be an exchange difference arising. And point number four that I want to make is that exchange difference that arises in the group accounts is not taken to the P&L. But at the group accounts, the exchange difference arising is taken directly to equity will be reported in other comprehensive income. 
And this exchange difference arises because you're retranslating. You're retranslating the net assets. You're retranslating the profit. You're retranslating the goodwill. Yeah. And so there is an exchange difference that arises. And obviously the format of a verbal podcast doesn't really lend itself for me demonstrating how this calculation can be made. But bear with me. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to talk about the retranslation of goodwill. Let's imagine that we've calculated goodwill and it's 90 crams. So our overseas subsidiary is in crams. And at the beginning of the year, the exchange rate is nine crams to one dollar. And at the end, it's 10 crams to one dollar. So we don't need a calculator. Now, goodwill hasn't changed. There's no impairment loss. You can never revalue goodwill. So in crams, it's always 90. But at the beginning of the year, the exchange rate was nine. 90 divided by nine gives you ten dollars. But at the end of the year, the exchange rate is 10. So $90, the same figure in crams divided by 10, gives you $9. So therefore, in dollars, in our presentational currency, last year the goodwill was 10, and this year the goodwill is 9. And the reason that it's changed, the reason that we've got this loss, is nothing to do with the goodwill itself. It's to do with the exchange rate. And that exchange rate is a loss of one. That exchange rate will go to equity. That exchange rate will be reported in OCI. Now, with goodwill, if that has been calculated with NCI at fair value, you would split it with the NCI. But if with goodwill, the NCI is being measured as a proportion of net assets, then that exchange loss would not be shared with the NCI. And that's the same principle that we've seen when we talked about impairment losses. One final thing about exchange differences at the group stage is they will be recycled. So you build up this exchange difference directly in equity. And I, I sort of get that because it's paper. It's unrealized. But you, you do it because the standard says so. And you build it up in equity. Now, what, what, what I say 21 says, and it's an old standard, it says recycle. So when you come to the final disposal and the derecognition of the subsidiary, the overseas subsidiary, you're derecognizing the net assets, you're derecognizing the NCI, you're derecognizing the goodwill that remains. You're also clearing out that cumulative foreign currency reserve and transferring it to the PL to directly form part of the profit or loss on the disposal in the group accounts. And that process is recycling. That is a reclassification from equity to P&L. And that is the rule in ISA 21. It's a different rule in ISA 16 PPE where you don't recycle any revaluation on the disposal of PPE. So you get an, uh, there's a little bit of an inconsistency there. I'm going to recap. We have been talking about preparing group accounts where you've got an overseas subsidiary. And the overseas subsidiary is preparing its accounts in its local functional currency, whether it's the cram, the ringgit, the shilling, doesn't matter. And we've got to translate their, their statement of financial position. We've got to translate their P&L into the presentational currency of the group, which will be the dollar. Assets and liabilities closing. Income and expenses average, PL average, goodwill closing. You're going to get an exchange difference arising on the retranslation of the net assets, the retranslation of the goodwill. That exchange difference goes to equity. That exchange difference fundamentally is split with NCI, unless it's the goodwill element where goodwill has been measured as a proportion of net assets. And that cumulative exchange difference that's sitting in equity on the disposal of the sub is recycled back into the PL as part of the profit or loss on disposal. Wow. So the simple stuff to remember, but you've got to practice, you've got to get involved in some questions. Yeah, I hope you found this useful. Go to my website if you want information about further resources that I offer and the courses that I offer, www.tomclendon.com. .co.uk. Thank you for listening.